Welcome to Global Online Friends. This in this video we are going to discuss about theory on growth and development uh, for your upcoming UGC NET or SET in economics. And this is our lecture number one on the unit three growth and development. And if you want to join our crash course for UGC NET or SET in economics, here complete theory lectures are available on all the units. Complete MCQ lectures are available on all the units. And you will receive entire syllabus mock test with solution PDF. Then notes are available on all the unit. You will receive practice MCQ set. And if you want to join this course, you can contact these numbers. You can also download global online app from Play Store. You can register by using your email ID or mobile number. Then you can search UGC Net Economic. Then you can access all the video lectures, mock test, MCQ lectures, notes, everything. So this is our lecture number one on growth and developmental unit so the, in this video you are going to discuss about theories of economic development so when it comes to theories of economic development there are various theories are available such as adam smith's theory uh, david ricardo's theory malthus theory so in this video let us discuss some very important theories so first let us start with Adam Smith theory of economic development. So as you all know when it comes to Adam Smith, he is known as the father of economics and the famous book written by Adam Smith is an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation. This book was written uh, in the year 1776. In this uh, book, Adam Smith was uh, explained about uh, theory of economic development. So Adam Smith stressed more on saving then division of labor then another one is extent of market these are the three main aspects uh, stressed by the adam smith and according to adam smith saving or capital accumulation it is the starting point of theory so uh, more capital accumulation then a nation will develop so uh, adam smith was given more importance to the capital accumulation and according to him wealth is considered as an index of the country's prosperity if if more if there is more capital accumulation or wealth then country will be developed so if there if there is less wealth then country is still developing or underdeveloped so he has given more importance to the capital accumulation or wealth of the country and wealth increases by producing more so when we when the pay, uh, when we are producing more we are selling more we are earning more so gdp will increase automatically nation will move towards prosperity so to produce more capital smith stands stressed on role of parsimony means people have to save more and more so when they are saving more it leads to increase in the capital accumulation and the and also uh, Adam Smith used laissez faire policy. Laissez faire policy means there is no intervention by the government in economic activities. Because of this uh, laissez faire policy, because of non intervention from the government, producers will produce more and they will earn more and more income. So, this will lead towards the prosperity because uh, here uh, there is no government intervention, there are no taxes means people can produce more and they can earn more and more income so adam smith believed that it is safe to leave the economy uh, to be uh, regulated and controlled by invisible hand invisible hand means there is no intervention by the government and uh, there are some features of this uh, adam smith's theory of economic development the first one is natural law natural law means there is free and independent action taken by the individuals the government will not take much decisions here regarding production and also people have to take this their own decisions and when it comes to individuals every individual of society left to pursue his economic activity people can produce more they can earn more income there is no limit here and so all the individuals they are trying to maximize their output in order to earn more and more income and freedom of, freedom of actions brings out the best of an individual which increases society's wealth of and progress yes? if people are free to produce more the people are free to produce more and more income so they will produce more they will earn more and the society will move towards the prosperity and adam smith opposed any government intervention in industry and commerce so adam smith opposed government intervention so he believed in laissez-faire policy 
so the next uh, feature is laser space so laser space just now i have explained you there is no intervention by the government on economic and economic activities so government should not put any restriction on production then the laser sport policy allows the producer to produce as much they like and as much income uh, they can earn and they can save as much they like then next to next one is important feature is division of labor so division of labor it it is uh, helping to increase the productivity of labor through specialization of tax so here adam smith has divided the entire work into the different people so that is known as the division of labor so here the work is subdivided into various parts and to the different workers in small parts so this is known as the division of labor so this will increase the efficiency then uh, this division of labor it is going to increase dexterity of workers it is uh, it will save the time and it will help to produce more commodity it will help to invention of better machines so next uh, if you go through the production function given by the adam smith adam smith uh, stressed on three important factors here one is labor second one is capital and the third one is land so these three uh, main important production function uh, uh, factors of production stressed by the adam smith so the here the production function will be y is equal to function of k l and n so here uh, capital labor and land and so adam smith emphasized labor has important factor along with the other factors he stressed more on la uh, labor and since the growth is a function of capital labor and uh, and land and also technology and here adam smith considered land it is a passive element so he has given least important to the land the people who are working in the land who are producing in, uh, in the land there are they are laborers for labor he has given more importance and in his view uh, land is a passive element so the production function does not conceive the possibility of diminishing marginal productivity and it is a subject of law increasing returns and adam smith believed in increasing returns to scale so smith argued that real cost of production shall tend to diminish with the passage of time as a result the existence of internal and external economies occurring out of these increases in market size so uh, as time passes we are going to see increasing return to scale so and also there is internal and external economies so because of the and also this will lead to the increase in the market size so we are going to uh, produce more and more and there is increasing returns to scale so this will lead to increase in the market size so automatically country is moving towards prosperity and uh, capital accu accumulation so according to adam smith investments are made because of because the capitalist wants to earn more profit here so capitalist they are going to save more and more income whatever they are saving they are going to invest it in order to earn higher level of profit so when a country develops and its capital stock expands the rate of profit declines but when a country going country is countries will become developed country its capital stocks start expanding but the rate of profit is going to decline the increasing competition among the capitalists raises the wages and tends towards lower profit so at here adam smith believed that investments are made by the capitalist in order to earn higher level of profit but when the countries develops so at that time what will happen these capitalists they start competing each other this competition because of this competition it is going to lead to the increase in the wages if wages increases means profit by the capitalist is going to decrease when wages increase they have to pay more salary to the workers so their profit is going to decrease so it is great difficulty to find new profitable investment outlets that leads to falling profits so it is very difficult to find profit when the country will become developed 
so agents of growth according to adam smith there are three main agents are there one uh, one is farmers then producers then businessmen these are the three agents of economic growth then it was uh, it was the pre trade enterprise and competition that led farmers producers and businessmen to expand the market and which in turn made the economic development interrelated and all these are interrelated farmers yeah, these producers these businessmen we can see interrelation among these three sectors then let us see process of growth so here according to adam smith the process of economic growth is cumulative division of labor made by accumulation of capital and expansion of market increases national income and output which in turn facilitates saving and further investment in this way economic development rises higher and higher so here the uh, growth of growth uh, growth of the economy is cumulative it means because of division of labor we can produce more when we produce more capital accumulation of the country will increase so this will lead to uh, increase in the market size when market market is going to expand national income or gdp is going to increase output will increase when output increases income level will increase if income level increases people will start saving more and more income when saving increases again for the sake of profit they are going to invest it again when uh, when investment increases again it is going to repeat produ production increases again capital accumulation increases so this will going to lead to the uh, country moving towards prosperity so the country is going to economic development development will take place then but this progress it is not endless ultimately it leads to the stationary state yes there is an end to this process there is an end to the, this prosperity because of scarcity of natural resources so as time passes there is Uh, scarcity of natural resources in the economy so this scarcity of resources is going to stop the economic growth and an economy will, uh, an economy uh, is moving towards stationary means here uh, growth will stop and this stationary state is character is characterized by unchanged population constant total income subsistence level of wages and elimination of profit in excess of the minimum consistent with risk absence of net investment so then more later because of uh, scarcity of natural resources the country is going to uh, move towards stationary state once it will reach the station uh, stationary state it means that there is more unemployment there is no uh, constant total income uh, the wages have reached to the subsistence level there is no profit for the capital least then country we start a uh, country is not developing so this is the process of economic growth according to adam smith and when this is going to take place means when the country is going to reach to the stationary state here capital accumulation is going to stop population is going to increase profits are very minimum wages are at subsistence level and there is no change in the per capita income and production and the economy reaches stag reaches to the state of stagnation so this is the progress of economic growth according to the uh, according to adam smith so this we can see in this diagram also here on the x axis we have taken the time and on the y axis we have taken rate of capital accumulation so here the economy is growing from uh, point k to point l during that time t so here the country is going to de develop initially but after t the at, at the point t uh, the uh, the economy is going to reach stationary state so link uh, this is linked to l after this l there is no growth the growth will not take place because of the subsistence level of wages So because of the higher level of wages at that point at at time t the wages are very high so because of this the growth will not take place because when wages are very high the profit will become zero 
so when profit becomes zero capital accumula capital accumulation is going to stop so so here the country will develop from k to l but at point l the country is going to reach stationary state here we can see higher level of wages profit will become zero so then capital accumulation is going to stop so this is about uh, adam smith's theory uh, next let us move to the ricardian theory of economic development so let us see david ricardo's theory of economic development here the david ricardo give more importance to some variables such as uh, capital accumulation then population profit wages and rent these are the some variables uh, considered by the david ricardo so here the econo in in this model uh, david ricardo explained huh? Uh, here can he considered to be ever changing with the passage of time so here this model is dynamic so, and here also uh, passage of time the country or the economy is going to reach stationary state and it determines the relative shares of different agents of production in national income and according to david ricardo there are three major groups are there in the economy these groups are the first group is landlords and the second group is capitalist and the third group is laborers among the uh, among these three sectors the entire productive land is distributed landlords capitalist and laborers among these three the entire land is distributed and the capitalist who are going to initiate the economic development in the society they are going to reinvest their income for the sake of profit and they are going to earn more and more profit and it will lead to the increase in capital formation so because of this capitalist the country is going to develop and the total national income is distributed among these uh, um, three groups such as in the form of rent wages and profit so let us see production function by david ricardo here uh, david ricardo considered uh, productivity has diminishing marginal productivity there is diminishing marginal productivity and uh, because of perfectly inelastic of land so we cannot increase the amount of land but the population is always increasing but the amount of land available for the agriculture is say are perfectly inelastic because of this we can experience diminishing marginal productivity so the marginal productivity of land labor and capital declines with the increase in the cultivation then uh, we can uh, we can introduce introduce the improvements in the agricultural land we can introduce at uh, modern techniques we can introduce machineries check the progress of uh, diminishing returns it could have temporary effects yes because of these modern techniques modern machinery is all yes we can increase the production but not for long term it is temporary then the production function given by david ricardo is y is equal to function of k n l k means capital n means labor and l is the land so y is equal to function of income uh, income or the national income is the function of all these three factors of production so next uh, even david ricardo stressed on capital accumulation so here also capital is the part of the wealth yes cap here also capital means wealth of the country and we are this capital is employed in production and this uh, this is cons uh, consist of food cloth tools raw materials machinery so many other goods and services and profit rate as long as rate of profit is positive the process of capital accumulation will continue and the economy will progress yes, please remember this according to david ricardo as long as rate of profit is positive the process of capital accumulation will continue and the economy will progress the economy is going to develop but and this profit the profit is depend on the uh, wages and the wages are depend uh, depended on price of the corn and the price of the corn is dependent on the fertility of marginal land hence profit and wages are inversely related here please remember uh, if uh, if wages increases ages of the uh, laborers increases 
then profit of the landlords or capitalist will decrease and when wages decreases profit will increase these profit and wages both are inversely related here then when there is an improvement in the agriculture we can bring more uh, modern techniques we can bring modern uh, equipment and all when there is an improvement in the agriculture the productivity power of land increases and and there is a fall in the price of the corn so we are the productivity of the land will increase due to uh, introduction of new machineries but the price of the corn is going to decrease here as a result subsistence wages will also fall but profits increases so there is more capital accumulation we can see and this will increase the demand for labor again demand for labor will increase again wage rate will is going to increase because of when demand for labor increases again they will demand for higher level of wages and uh, because there is more demand for labor wages are high so population is going to increase again this increase in population leads to increase in the demand for corn and also again the price of the corn is going to increase since the wages rise the profit will decline and there will be less capital accumulation so this capital accumulation and wages are oppositely related when wages rises profit will decline so capital accumulation will also decline so the process of uh, growth will continue till the profits fall to zero so this process this economic development this uh, uh, accumulation of capital is going to continue till profits reach to zero when profits are going to zero uh, reach zero it is going to stop capital accumulation will stop and at this stage capital accumulation is going to stop and progress of economy will reach to this stationary state next increase in wages so as i told you wage rate it dependent on the number of workers and wage fund and wage rate falls with increase in the number of workers when number of workers will increase the supply of workers is going to increase automatically wage rate is going to decrease and vice versa if there is less supply of labor then wage rate will increase and there is positive correlation between wage rate and size of population so the rate of profit in the agricultural sector determines the rate of profit in the industrial sector so please remember this according to david ricardo both the sectors are interrelated the agriculture sector the profit in the agricultural sector determines the rate of profit in the industrial sector because the whatever the goods are produced in the industrial sector they are demanded by the agriculture sector thus when the profit declines in the agriculture sector it uh, it also declines in the industrial sector if there is less profit in the agriculture sector then profit in the industrial sector will also decline so we can explain by using this diagram also here the quantity of corn is measured along the vertical axis then uh, labor along the x axis so here the curve ep is going to represent average product and mp is going to represent marginal product then with oe amount of labor so by using oe amount of labor total corn produced is opqu qe so by using oe amount of labors we are going to produce op QE amount of product here and uh, rent is shown by rectangle PQML so here the area PQ is PQML yes this is the area of rent yes it, it is given to the rent to the land and uh, rent is the difference between ap and mp and at the subsistence wage rate subsistence means the ow so this is the subsistence level of wages and uh, here supply curve of the labor is wn elastic okay uh, 
infinitely elastic curve at subsistence level of wages the supply of uh, labor curve is elas infinitely elastic and the total wage is o w n e so here o w n e is the total wages given to the laborers this is subsistence level of wages and here total profit w l m n so this is the profit w l m n so this is the profit which is going to the landlords so the this pq uh, is pq ml it is the rent to the land and uh, this is w and eo this is the wages to the uh, labors and this is the profit uh, l m n w it is the profit to the capitalist then uh, again the country will reach stationary state so the saving is done by the capitalist so here uh, capitalists are going to uh, save more and more income because they are going to earn the profit here and this uh, profit will be saved so when they save this profit again they are going to so uh, but as the society progresses the share of profit begins to decline so again this will not continue so when once the country is progressed again the profit is going to decline in the economy so this fall in rate of profit because again the capitalists they will they start with competing with each other so when they start competing with each other wages will rise when wages rise wages rise their profit level is going to decrease so when profit decreases it is going to slacken the capital accumulation capital accumulation is going to decrease here so again the economy will be come back to the same stage so where there is no increase in the capital and the economy is going to reach stationary state so in this state capital accumulation is going to stop population does not grow the wage rate is at subsistence level no technological progress will take place then with the increase in capital accumulation profits and wages tend to increase and the rise in wages bring about decline in profit so here also you can see by using this diagram the decline in profits will continue till a stage comes when the net product curve intersect with o w so here uh, this is a uh, np curve here net product curve so this uh, profit is going to decline it will continue still this uh, net product curve intersect o w line that is at point p so at this point wages are equal to net products and here profits are zero so any disturbance to the right of the point p will make the net product less than wage level which is impossible so after this point no production will take place so p is the point at which economy is in stationary state at this point the capital accumulation will stop unemployment will increase so okay friends this is about today's session in the next video we'll discuss another two important theories uh, one is Malthus economic development theory and another one is Rostow's economic development theory and also Karl Marx's economic uh, development theory we will discuss in the next class.